Hi everyone, welcome to the Penguin Prof channel. Today I want to talk about how to approach medical terminology, uh, what I like to call breaking up, which isn't hard to do. So the key, of course, is to take big, complicated problems and to break them down into small, more manageable pieces. This is true for language as well as the rest of life. Um, the problem, of course, as I've mentioned in other videos, is that in science and medicine we use a lot of terms that come from Greek and Latin roots. So I highly recommend that as you master all these pieces you keep a list, um, or better yet, get yourself a dictionary of Greek and Latin roots, and um, you know, you just build your skill set from the bottom up and it gets easier as you go, I promise. Um, first thing to understand is that you gotta break words down into their component parts, and most medical and science terms will have um, a beginning, which we call a prefix, a middle, which is the root of the word, and then an ending, which is the suffix. And so usually the prefix um, and or the suffix is, is a modifier um, of the main root of the word. So you will probably notice, if you haven't already, that uh, medical terms are really long and uh, it's very daunting for a lot of people, but the truth is most of them are very descriptive and they mean something. So if you can break them down, it's not going to be too bad. I mean, when you first look at these terms, uh, you can just say, you know, forget it, this is ridiculously long, or you can just say, look, you know, break them down and they become more manageable. So all I want to do in this video is give you some of the most common of the puzzle pieces that you will encounter in medical terminology uh, and hopefully give you a good place to start. So something you'll see every time we talk about bone and the skeletal system is osteo. Um, when we're talking about cell parts, when we're talking about conditions, things like this slide shows uh, osteoarthritis. Don't let this happen to you, by the way. Take care of your joints. Um, you're going to see this osteo somewhere in there. Osteocyte, in fact, is the name of a bone cell. When you see myo or sarco, that refers to muscle. Uh, all different types of cell structures within muscle you're going to see uh, with myo or sarco. For example, you'll see the sarcomere, you'll see the sarcoplasmic reticulum, you will see uh, myofibers or myofibrils. All of those things relate to muscle. Um, muscle has a lot of really specialized uh, structures and almost all of them you're going to see with myo or sarco, usually in the prefix. This one you probably know already, neuro refers to nerves. Um, a neuron is a, a nerve cell, which is what you're looking at here, but there's a lot of other terms, of course, that use that root, so you know you're always going to be talking about nerves there. When you see derm, that refers to the skin. You probably know a lot of these terms already. The epidermis, which is this section way up here at the top. Epi just means on top. Um, there are five layers of the epidermis, um, and then beneath the epidermis is the dermis, the dermal layer, which is what you're seeing down here. So derm, you probably have heard of terms like dermatitis, for example, just inflammation of the skin, a dermatologist, um, things like that, all relating to the skin. Blood vessels, you're going to often see the term angio, and you've hopefully heard of angioplasty, which is basically the insertion of a, of a little catheter in a balloon, which is inflated in order to create space inside an occluded vessel. Um, ve veins, we have veno or phlebo, like a phlebotomist. Phlebotomist is someone who draws blood um, for their profession. We see that a lot. Most people know cardio and the heart. Um, we really don't know why when you suffer emotional distress, uh, your heart aches. It's kind of a mystery of modern medicine. I can tell you that uh, Tylenol does not help. Things relating to the nose, you'll often see rhino, like rhinoplasty, which is a nose job. Um, and of course, that's the root for the rhinoceros, so named because of not so much its big nose, but big horns. This term uh, from tympani refers to things like the tympanic membrane, which is the eardrum. Uh, the tympani, that's the kettle drum in an orchestra. And of course, uh, the drum vibrates and creates a particular pitch. And similarly, when uh, sound waves strike the tympanic membrane and cause it to vibrate, that will cause the uh, ear ossicles to vibrate and set up a whole chain of events which leads to your ability to hear. Um, this one you probably don't know but NEPH, N-E-P-H, 
uh, it relates to the kidney. Um, the functional unit of the kidney is the nephron. This is um, the actual nephron here. Um, that is how the kidney is able to filter blood and produce a filtrate, which will eventually be urine. So here's some more. Um, some of these you may know. Um, they're all pretty common. The skull, uh, the skull itself actually is referred to as the cranium. You've probably heard of that. Um, the eye, you'll see things like ophthalmologist. You'll see um, an ocular. The ear is auto, O-T-O. Um, autoliths, those are the tiny little uh, bones in the ear. They're actually the smallest bones in the body, as I was, I was mentioning earlier. A blood clot, um, you've probably heard of a thrombosis. Um, that's fairly commonly used. Um, liver, you see hepato a lot. Uh, liver cells are called hepatocytes. Um, you may have heard of hepatitis, uh, which is a disease of the liver. Um, breast, actually, you're going to see things like um, mammary glands. I'm sure you've heard of mammography. Large intestine, we use uh, colo, as in the colon for the large intestine itself, but you'll see it in other things like a colonoscopy. Um, gastro for the stomach, ileo for the small intestine, thoraco for the chest. Um, you've, I'm sure, heard of things like uh, the thoracic wall. Um, the thorax, all the same root, and then the lung, pneumo or pleuro. I'm sure you've heard of pneumonia. Um, pleuro, you'll see things like uh, pleurisy um, relating to the uh, inflammation of lung membranes. A lot of terms, uh, prefixes especially, relate to size. Um, size matters, of course. Macro, uh, which means large. Micro, which means small. You probably know those. Megalo or megali means large or enlarged. Uh, rates. This is really important to take note because a lot of these prefixes look very much the same, but they mean dramatically different things. So, for example, if your patient is hyperthyroidic, it means that their thyroid is overactive. If they are hypothyroidic, it means the thyroid is not as active as it should be. So the, the main part of the word looks the same, but if you change that prefix, it means a completely different thing. Um, tacky and Brady referring to rates as well, often in reference to the heart. So tachycardia, for example, is a resting heart rate that is too fast. Um, bradycardia, resting heart rate that is slow. Colors, we uh, have a lot of prefixes relating to color. Uh, chlorophyll, for example, like in plants, is green. Uh, leuk is white. You see that in leukocytes. Red, erythro, uh, erythrocytes, red blood cells. And uh, cyan, which is the color blue, like erythrocyanin, uh, cyanobacteria you may have seen in general biology. Those are the blue-green algae. Oh my goodness, spend some time with these directional terms, directional prefixes, because they will mess you up. Um, sometimes, I swear, these little guys um, are what drive people crazy. Look at this, for example. So endo or intra both mean within. But look at this difference. Intra versus inter, which means between. So for example, I would say intracellular, and that means within a single cell, right? But what if I say intercellular? So that means between cells. It sounds like a very small difference, but it means a dramatically different um, idea. So most people would think about perhaps intercourse. Yeah, that's a good one, uh, which is between people. There, there is no such thing as intercourse, um, as far as I know. Extra refers to outside. Um, you certainly know things like extraterrestrial. Uh, peri, peri means around. Uh, so when we talk about something uh, that is around a structure, um, a peritoneum, for example, um, that is fairly commonly used to mean around something. It could even be, it could be a cell, it could be a whole sheet of tissue, it could be around an organ. Uh, the pericardium, for example, is a membrane surrounding the entire heart. And then trans, that means across. So this could be something like um, a protein, that actually goes across a cell membrane, uh, a transmembrane protein, or you could be using it to discuss uh, an actual process. Um, 
you're going to see that as well. But these are little guys that really make a big difference. Um, test and procedures, these get used a lot and uh, it's really helpful to know these because uh, you'll see them over and over again. Echo as in echocardiogram using ultrasonic waves. Um, electro, I'm sure you know. Um, ectomy is the removal. A gram is a picture. Um, you can talk about a graph, the process of making an image, making a cut, um, using an instrument for viewing or creating an opening. These are very common. And finally, uh, some problems. Uh, dis meaning not working properly. Um, mal uh, as a prefix meaning bad. Um, the term malady comes from this. Uh, malaria. Uh, was a disease that was thought to be spread through the air. So literally, malaria means bad air. We now know, of course, it's not caused by the air. Um, emia is referring to some sort of blood condition. Um, and itis, anything with itis is an inflammation. And osis, that's just a very, very broadly used term for a condition or a disease, um, as is uh, the suffix pathy, for example, neuropathy. Um, is a very broad term for a disease of the nervous system. So when you put it all together, um, we can take some big complicated words and break them down. So here is a three-parter for you, hypercholesteremia. So when you break it down, you can see that hyper, which means elevated, this refers to, of course, cholesterol, and emia, this is referring to uh, a condition in the blood. It's elevated blood cholesterol. Dermatitis, I think I gave that one away earlier. Uh, derm referring to the skin and that itis is the inflammation. So that's just an inflammation of the skin. A colostomy referring to the colon and then an actual opening in the colon. So some things for you guys to try on your own. Uh, there's plenty of fun things to look at. Uh, I think that you'll find that if you just kind of get over the initial panic of, wow, these words are long and foreign, uh, you just got to keep going, keeping, keep reading, keep exposing yourself to them, and trust me, uh, it gets easier. As always, I want to thank you for visiting the Penguin Prof channel. Please comment, rate, and subscribe. Join us on the Facebook page and follow on Twitter. Good luck.